Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo today, doing a little bit of different filming. Got uh, my buddy uh, Solomon, the King Cobra here in the background. Now we're going to talk about common prolapses in reptiles, okay? Now, before we get into prolapses though, got something for you. We're getting very, very close to 500 subscribers. Now, when we hit that 500 subscriber mark, we're gonna do a special 500 subscriber episode. It's gonna be on feeding of different reptiles. Now, who doesn't like watching maybe a tortoise eat or a lizard eat or, or seeing all the different ways that these guys eat, things that they eat, uh, different snakes. It's gonna be just a nice, cool video of just various reptiles eating what they eat, okay? Different ones that we have filmed throughout the last probably year uh, of feeding time, okay? So we're gonna do a special episode. This will be a part one, uh, but that'll be a 500 subscriber episode uh, just for the uh, mark of being able to have, say we have 500 subscribers. Now, again, make sure you follow, make sure you subscribe. Uh, let's go back over this again. Okay, common prolapses. Now, with common prolapses, we do have one uh, particular tegu that come in not long ago. He ended up passing away right after he was uh, right after he was brought into us. Uh, literally same day, uh, prolapse had been out uh, so long that uh, it ended up uh, ended up taking uh, taking his life, and he uh, become deceased because of that. Now, common prolapses are a tissue swollen tissue issue that comes out of the cloaca opening, okay? So we'll show you through photos and stuff all the different things that I'm talking about here. In reptiles, reptiles, their rear end is known as the cloaca opening, okay? What happens is caudal pressure or pressure from inside of the body pushes tissue out of the cloaca opening, sometimes even as much as in some of the lower internal organs, okay? the intestines, things like that, okay? What happens when this happens is for one of two reasons. Common prolapse occurs due to either intestinal parasites or most of the time impaction, okay? Now, you could take it to a vet, bring it to us, do, do it yourself. There's some things that I'm gonna tell you that you can do to try and help alleviate it. Okay, so some of the things that you can do when it comes to this is going to be what we talk about here in a few minutes. However, I want you to understand something. Even though we deal with the common prolapse right then, right there, if you don't deal with the underlying issue, then the chances of it prolapsing again are gonna be very, very great. It's gonna be much higher, okay? So once that muscular tone of the cloaca opening is weakened, then it makes it much easier for that to happen again. Now. I'm going to tell you some things that a professional will do, what we would do, what a experienced uh, zoological vet might do, um, and I'll tell you some things that you can do to kind of help your animal and help yourself to begin with, and then we're going to talk about what not to do, okay? Now, when we start talking about the common prolapse due to intestinal parasites, uh, we've, I don't think we've put up an episode on parasites yet, but we'll, we'll and we'll do that uh, on intestinal parasites, some of the things to look out for. Really stinky bowel movements, uh, really loose stools, they're eating but they're losing weight, uh, or they're just not maintaining a good weight. Uh, that can be all indicators of having intestinal parasites, okay? Um, that's a really good indicator. Now, sometimes that can happen when you change up the diet, uh, then loose stools can happen as well. Uh, not so much weight loss, but when you start seeing a combination of those, uh, especially like really, really, uh, really bad runny uh, stools, but also losing weight, that's a pretty good sign that it's got intestinal parasites. Um, now, the other one would be uh, due to impaction or constipation, as it were. Uh, when they take in things 
things or if they're not warm enough and they don't process uh, process their food good enough and they're actually pushing out undigested or un not fully processed food, uh, then that may put pressure down there. Uh, we all understand what constipation is. Uh, and it's the same, same concept applies with reptiles, okay? Uh, could be foreign body matters, uh, could be undigested food. Um, egg binding is another thing that can, that can uh, be on that when it comes to females uh, or just egg binding in general can cause a lot of problems, but we're not gonna talk about that in this particular, uh, in this particular one. Um, when we start talking about dealing with a common prolapse, uh, at home, when you see something come out, a lot of the times we'll get a call, uh, people think they have a prolapse, and it's just the animal's just defecating, urinating, whatever. Um, and if it's a male, um, a lot of the times they don't pull their hemipenes back in fast enough. The hemipenes may stay out for a little bit. Um, and it's like, oh my God, I got a prolapse. No, you don't, no just, just stop for a minute and chill out. That's when we tell people most of the time, just send us a picture, we'll tell you if it's prolapse or if it's, or if it's not. Um, and, if, if, and, and again, remember, if they're just having a bowel movement, they are going to push a little bit of, of tissue. It's going to kind of roll, the cloaca opening is going to roll itself out and you'll see some exposed tissue. But there's a big difference between seeing exposed tissue and actually tissue hanging out or protruding from the cloaca opening, okay? Um, dealing with the, pro, the, the prolapse uh, yourself, to give aid and see if we can take care of the situation first, there's only two things that you should do, okay? And it's not the thing uh, that you're gonna see some people talk about. Uh, but the two things you should do is either you can do a bath with sugar water, or you can do something like caro syrup. Honey is another one. Anything that has sugar in it, sugar reduces swelling, okay? So what happens is when the pressure has been put, the caudal pressure has been put to the cloaca opening, it pushes all that tissue out. The tissue is swollen. So it's sticking out there. It's not able to recede back like it's supposed to. And what you do by using sugar water, caro syrup, whatever, anything that has a heavy amount of sugar in it, that sugar depletes the swelling and allows it to recede. You have to do that fair immediately, okay, near immediately. And a lot of the times that will help that prolapse to recede, okay? Now, remember what I said. Just because the prolapse recedes and it goes back in does not mean that you have dealt with the underlying problem that caused that prolapse to begin with. Still need to figure that out, okay? Um, so that way it doesn't continue to happen over and over and over again. Um, that's one way of dealing with it at home. Now, I'm gonna tell you what not to do before those of us that would deal with it more on the medical side of things deal with this, okay? What not to do is don't take a Q-tip and try cramming it back up in there. Um, if you don't have k or something like that and you just want to immediately take it to the vet, you can cake it in Vaseline. Uh, because remember, tissue when it starts drying out becomes dead. So the first thing you don't want to do in any way, shape, or form is you don't want that tissue starting to dry out and harden up. Um, because surgery will absolutely happen at that point. But if nothing else and you don't have any of that, you can put some Vaseline around it. And that's just going to keep it lubricated um, and keep it from drying out. Now. Do not Q-tip it and try and push it back in there. And I even seen one of these TV shows on Animal Planet with some doctor, whatever he is, I, I don't know, don't care. Uh, somebody showed me the other day and I just started laughing because what he did was pushed it back up in there and then sewed the cloaca shut and left just enough of the cloaca opening for bowel movements to happen. But what, here's the problem. I get the concept behind what he was doing, but the problem is, is if you're still feeding that animal, if he still has bowel movements, if he still has fecal matter in there, he's closed that hole off so tight that if it's something that's big that's not processed like it's supposed to, it's just gonna blow it wide open. It's gonna literally tear that animal down there. Um, so that is that is not a good idea. That is not something that should be done. Um, it should be dealt with not only through figuring out exactly why the prolapse happened, but also either through reducing the swelling or surgically fixing it, even though surgery can be expensive, but just pushing this back up in there and suturing it right back together, that's just, realistically, it's kind of craziness. I mean, it really is. Um, because you really have to think about, you're putting, pushing, forcing all this swollen tissue back up in there. And if any of the organs have moved lower because that tissue is lower, remember, the tissue is in there to help keep things up where it's supposed to be. So if the organs are lower and you end up cramming all this stuff back up in there and you sew it shut, you may even inhibit the organs themselves, okay? Dumb idea, just stupid, okay? So, 
do not use Q-tips and try pushing it back into the cloaca opening, okay? Now, on the professional medical side of things, uh, one of two things is gonna happen. Either we're gonna try and reduce that swelling, we're gonna try and do the same thing at, at a less of a cost, at a um, at less abrasiveness to the animal itself. Um, we don't like putting animals through undue stress and through all that stuff. Uh, but if it's just got to happen, then what tends to happen is they excise, uh, the, the tissue gets excised, uh, the, the swollen, bad tissue and then reattached into the cloaca uh, so that way that that swollen infected tissue is now gone and then it's reinserted and reattached back inside um, that can be kind of you know kind of a risky thing um, but again you got to remember prolapses uh, happen quite commonly especially in tegus um, they happen quite commonly in turtles, wild caught turtles especially, uh, like box turtles. Uh, that can happen quite often in, in uh, quite a few different species. Snakes are known for it, uh, but a lot of your a lot of your lizards are known for having um, having the uh, common prolapse just due to the things that they eat and maybe they're just not put into a place or they don't have a place that's warm enough to help them process it or they take something down that they shouldn't have taken down to begin with when they when they were eating um, or the other cause uh, the other key cause is due to intestinal parasites uh, from just bad food essentially uh, or uh, parasite ridden food kind of thing now this is kind of an overview all right, this is just a brief overview of common prolapses. And remember, uh, you know, seek, seek help first and foremost, uh, whether by phone, whether by going into uh, a, uh, a exotic place that you have trust in. But the main thing is, is when a common prolapse happens, you want to start dealing with it immediately. Like I said, you can coat it in Vaseline, you can do sugar water, you can do the caro syrup, um, coat it in caro syrup. Uh, give it you know a little while and see if that doesn't help reduce the swelling uh, or if you're going to go ahead and take it to a vet anyways then go ahead and start doing that to at least uh, to at least help with the process of hopefully hopefully um, if they're going to give antibiotic therapy then hopefully it helps start that process uh, but the first things you definitely going to want to do is you're going to want to have uh, potentially an x-ray of the belly done and you're going to want to have a fecal sample done just to, just to confirm parasites or uh, bowel movement uh, impaction whatever the case may be there okay uh, sometimes it can happen due to damaged organs uh, just internal just genetics uh, things just go wrong inside maybe they're swelling on the inside tumors uh, blockages uh, just any any number of things can cause that but like I said the two key things is due to intestinal parasites and due to uh, due to foreign body matter or uh, just straight up impaction okay now this is chad with the reptile rangers at the kernersville reptile zoo and medical center we hope this has been helpful hopefully this gives you some insight and is and is helpful for you and your pet make sure to write us in let us know what you want us to uh, film about what you want to see hit that subscribe button remember don't forget we got that uh uh, we got that 500 subscriber special coming up. Uh, we're already in the works uh, trying to get that put together. Uh, and I uh, hope that uh, you look forward to that. And make sure to share our way. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.